Hi everyone, this first video is going to review some basic atomic structure for you. Um, we'll do some vocabulary, which you can practice on Quizlet, and then also um, look at how this applies specifically to uh, biology and understanding more about biochemistry. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, this is the generalized structure of an atom. And it's in a very cartoonish sort of way, but that's important just to simplify. A lot of the times in science, we will use simplified models in order to understand basic concepts. And so that's kind of why we're using this cartoonish version. If you search up the structure of an atom, you're gonna find all sorts of things on the internet, um, different visual representations. But for now, this is going to get the job done. We're gonna start out with two major areas. I'm looking at two major areas of the atom. The first is this center part, and that is called the nucleus. And that is not gonna be the only time that you see the term nucleus in biology, um, but it is a nucleus of a cell, just like it's the nucleus of an atom, so that um, those terms have uh, the same meaning, just in a different context. The nucleus is made up of two particles. So you'll notice that these particles here, the orange ones, do not have a, um, a charge, um, and the yellow ones do have a charge. And then these little white ones out here that we'll talk about in just a second also have a charge. But the nucleus of an atom is made of two different types of particles. We'll take a quick second to see if you can remember what those particles are and their charge. If you guessed or remembered that the positive charged um, particles of the atom are called protons, then you are correct. Protons exist in the nucleus of an atom and they have a positive charge, um, which is really important. Um, we'll come, become, a, it's important and will become more important in a little bit. Um, and then the orange ones that are not showing any sort of charge, those are called neutrons um, and they are neutral which means that they don't have a positive charge or a negative charge. They, do, they just do not have an electric charge. Um, those are both found in the nucleus. Um, when we move out over to the exterior part of the atom, we are looking at, you can kind of see this tiny little um, negative sign. If we zoom in, you could probably see it a little bit better. Um, but those exist on the exterior part of an atom and those are called, do you remember? Those are called electrons. Now electrons are what we're really gonna be focusing on um, in biology, which is the, generally speaking, the first, um, the first science class that you'll take at AISD. Uh, and electrons have a negative charge. So we have inside of our atom, we have on the nucleus or the centermost part of the atom, we have uh, positive charges and neutral charges. And those are um, really concentrated and actually much smaller than they're shown here. And on the exterior part, um, we have electrons. So you can see um, the number of electrons and the number of protons um, based on some information in the periodic table, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. So inside of my atoms where my nucleus exists. And I'm just gonna sort of color this all um, the same. So we're not getting, really wanna focus on the electrons out here. Um, we're looking at the electrons. Electrons, you'll notice that there are two sort of shells, right? We've got these two areas where electrons exist. And for the purposes of this course, you don't really have to know a lot about those um, spaces or structures, uh, but I do want you to know that they are called orbitals, right? So each one of these are called orbitals and that's where electrons live. Um, so, a, so our orbitals can uh, fit certain numbers of electrons on them. It has to do with energy um, and some physics stuff, which you'll learn a lot about next year, um, but electrons live on orbitals and the outermost orbital of an atom is called the valence, right? So the valence is really important because the number of electrons in an atom's valence is going to determine 
how it gets along or bonds with other atoms. So those are a couple of key terms that you'll definitely want to write down. Electrons live in orbitals and the outermost orbital of an atom is called the valence, okay? Another key thing to remember is that atoms, generally speaking, like to have eight electrons in their valence, right? So that we, it's a, sort of a hard and, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quick and easy way to remember um, what an atom is going to do um, and though the, how it's going to bond with other chemicals um, or other elements. Um, and so they want eight valence electrons and that is called the octet rule. Right, so eight refers to octet, um, or octet refers to eight, I guess, and that is called the octet rule. So this is some basic information before we move on to the next piece. Now we'll go back and do a quick review of this information. So inside of the nucleus of an atom, I have protons, which are positively charged, and neutrons, which are neutral. And then on the exterior or the outside portion of the atom, um, in their orbitals, that is where I find the electrons. Um, and you're seeing a, a huge size difference between the protons and the neutrons versus the electrons. Um, and that is true, electrons are super small compared to the protons and neutrons in an atom. The Shells or the outer parts of the uh, atom are called orbitals. And the outermost, so the outermost orbital of an atom is called the valence. Okay. Protons have a positive charge. Neutrons have, I just use a zero um, for a neutral charge and electrons have a negative charge. So we are most interested in how many electrons are in my valence because atoms, generally speaking, want to have eight valence electrons. And eight, the way to remember that is the octet rule. So those are some key terms of the piece that we just did. Moving on to the second part of the video, we want to look specifically at how this information applies to biology. So I've erased a bunch of this. I'll give you a copy of this in class, um, but I've erased a bunch of information right now because I really want us to focus on the essential components um, and the elements that we are going to be focused on in biology. And those elements, are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And you'll see on the period of, periodic table of biologists that these are highlighted. So here you can see on this side that carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur are all highlighted. They're all very close together. Um, hydrogen is over here by itself. Um, hydrogen is the most ubiquitous element in the universe. And ubiquitous means everywhere. Um, there's more hydrogen everywhere than any other element, um, which is one of the reasons that it plays so nicely with all of the other elements because there's so much of it. But these are the really important uh, elements in biochemistry. So I wanna point out one last thing. And this is how to use the information that we just talked about with the information from the periodic table, right? So when I'm looking at these six elements and I want to understand how they're going to play with other elements, I have to look at what number. So we just talked about it. 
if I want to understand how elements are going to interact or bond with other elements, then I have to know how many valence electrons are in each of the atoms, right? Remember that typically atoms want eight electrons in their valence, and that's going to determine how they behave. And here is a sort of cheat sheet rule that you can use to determine the number of valence electrons for these atoms. See this number up here organizes these elements into groups. And those numbers are Roman numerals, but they are gonna tell me how many valence electrons are in each of these atoms. So for example, hydrogen is in group one, it has one valence electron. All of these elements in the second group have two valence electrons and so on and so forth all the way up the periodic table. So I've got three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now you'll notice that these elements over here in group eight have a full valence electron, or sorry, valence shell, because they want eight, they have eight. These are typically called the noble gases or inert gases. And that's because they don't really react with a lot of things. They've got a full valence and they're fine just how they are. And so you really have to try super, super hard to get the electrons to do anything because they're perfectly stable. Um, the rest of them, however, aren't quite and so they are going to interact with other elements in order to get a full valence shell. So let's look at, for example, um, for an example, let's look at carbon. Carbon, um, which is gonna be, you know, super important in biology, carbon is in group four. Um, and that means that carbon has four valence electrons. And this is really important. So if carbon has four valence electrons, then that means it can and it will bond four times with other elements in order to fill its valence shell. Um, and that's just kind of like a super simple explanation of why things bond in the way that they bond. So this is, um, we'll get more into this and it'll probably make more sense as we go through. Um, for another example, we could look at or oxygen. So here is oxygen over here. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So oxygen is typically going to form two bonds um, with other elements. And the one that you're most familiar with, of course, is H2O. Now we have a whole separate video about the importance of water in biochemistry. But for now, when we look at that, oxygen is going to form a bond with each hydrogen atom, and that's where you get H2O. Um, we wanna put a pause in that for now, just really quickly, let's zoom out a little bit and recap some of the information that we talked about in the video. I'm gonna list out the vocabulary terms that I think are probably some new and some old for you. Um, and then what you wanna do is go practice with these terms in Quizlet and make sure that you are really comfortable um, the, I heard a statistic once that in the first year of a biology class, uh, there can be more new vocabulary than the first two years of a foreign language. So it's really important that you utilize Quizlet in this course and that you're practicing regularly and often and that you're really comfortable with the language um, because as you begin to acquire the information, you'll wanna be able to explain yourself using those terms. So the terms that we looked at today, let's see, we've got protons, neutron, electron, Remember that protons have a positive charge, neutrons are neutral, and electrons have a negative charge. Um, protons and neutrons exist in the nucleus of an atom, and electrons are in the orbitals. 
Um, the orbitals of an atom, the outermost orbital is called a valence. And valence shells typically want to have um, eight electrons in them. And that is called the octet rule. So octet means eight. Um, so that sort of ties in all of the stuff with the atomic structure. And then of course, your important big six elements and biochemistry are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Um, that is all that we have for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please shoot me a message in Hangouts um, or ask it during, uh, during class. Uh, just kind of remember some important things other than the science, uh, and that is that you are awesome and science is awesome, and I'll see you next time.